for game two, the Astros and Cubs here on CSN. Hi again, everyone, along with Bob Brenly, I'm Len Casper. The Cubs have hit the 100 game mark this season, and they're not nearly where they want to be. We're going to look back at the last five years. Yeah, not only look back where the Cubs teams over the last five years were at the century mark, but what the total wins were for each one of those seasons. And as you said, uh, the best way to put it is the Cubs have a lot of work to do over their remaining 62 games this season. It's not out of the question they could have a respectable season, but they're going to have to play much better baseball. They are six and a half up on Houston. But only for fifth place currently in the National League Central. A couple of struggling starters today on the mound. Wandy Rodriguez for the Astros has had a rough month of July, but we've seen him a lot, haven't we? Well, we've seen Wandy good, we've seen him bad, and as you mentioned, his last three outings, he's been horrible for the Astros. This will be his 18th game against the Cubs in his career. And when his curveball is working, he can be a very effective pitcher. I think that's the key for him today. And for Randy Wells, he might be pitching for his future, at least short term, in the Cubs rotation. You see his numbers against Houston, but that includes three losses last year. Yeah, uh, Rodrigo Lopez was the other option to take the ball today. He has been pitching extremely well, but looking at the big picture, it's important that the Cubs find Randy Wells' best stuff and get him out there on a regular basis. Cubs have not won a series over their last nine. A win today or tomorrow would snap that streak. So we'll see what happens today. Middle game of this series. The Cubs got the series off to a good start yesterday with a come from behind 4-2 win. Game two is next. Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. 75 years of being right here in Illinois means no one's closer to your wellness. Experience. Wellness. Everywhere. Subway. Every day at Subway, choose from many delicious regular footlong subs for just $5. Subway. Eat fresh. Honda. Visit your local Honda dealer today or go to shophonda.com and find great values on a new Honda. AT&T U-verse. Find out more of what's possible at att.com. AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Southwest Airlines new Rapid Rewards. Unlimited reward seats and no blackout dates. We hope you're dry and that your car isn't uh, buried in some water somewhere. Man, what a long storm last night. Now we hope everybody's all right. Hope you have your power as well. As the Cubs and the Astros will play game two of this three game series. Randy Wells will face this Astros Southwest starting lineup written out by Brad Mills. Michael Bourne is hot. He's hit in seven in a row. Angel Sanchez gets a nod at short today for Clint Barmas. Hunter Pence their all star in right. Carlos Lee's in left. Chris Johnson plays third. With Brett Wallace across the way at first. Rookie Jose Altuve is at second. Carlos Corporan is a catcher for Wandy Rodriguez. 
Let's take a look at the Cubs defensively today. Brought to you by degree, as we expected. A couple of right-handers getting the start today. It'll be Soriano and left. Bird in center. Reed Johnson taking over for Fukudome in right field. Ramirez and Castro on the left side of the infield. Barney and Jeff Baker taking over for Carlos Peña at first base. They will man the right side of the infield. Giovanni Soto doing the catching today for right-hander Randy Wells. His numbers on the season. And he needs to do a little better job of missing bats or at least getting weak contact. Very important that he uses secondary pitches and use them early. He's our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher. C.B. Buckner, born in Jamaica, moved to the U.S. in 1973. In his 13th year, he's going to call the balls and strikes with Dan Isonia, the crew chief Dale Scott, and Jerry Neals on the bases. Speaking of on the bases, that's where you do not want Michael Bourne to be. This guy is a uh, game disruptor when he gets on base. Leads the major leagues in stolen bases this year. Has done so. And going back to 08. And the first pitch is deposited in the left for a base hit. And now an eight game hitting streak for Bourne who has four hits already in this series. That didn't take long. No, and if history holds true, he won't be at first base very long either. Very important, Randy Wells, keep him close over there, alter his delivery to home plate, give Giovanni Soto an opportunity to throw out Michael Bourne because he will be running. Sanchez, the shortstop, as Wells will fire over. 81 degrees with a slight breeze out of the southeast. As we get started, he's got eight steals already against the Cubs. Wells gets a sign from his catcher today, Giovanni Soto, born not running, and the pitch is a fastball that's in on Sanchez. Mentioned it in the open. Randy Wells won his first two career decisions against the Astros before. Losing all three last year. This is his first start against Houston since September 8th of 2010. Missed again to a nothing. Randy with one win on the season. That was in his 2011 debut on the first homestand. He beat Arizona four to one. Nine starts and a long DL stint since, and he's still looking for that second victory. Got the slider over two and one. Now Hunter Pence in the on deck circle, and we were talking about his unusual warm up procedure. Very awkward looking practice swings, but. Just an over exaggeration to remind him of what he wants to do when he gets up there at the plate. It looks like he's really concentrating on driving that right hip and the backside of his body through the hitting zone. Everybody has something they do in that on deck circle to remind themselves of their own trigger points, things they want to make sure they do right mechanically when they get in the box. And sometimes it looks a little awkward in the on deck circle, but. If it works in the batter's box, that's all that matters. I wonder what Hunter Pence does. Even his throwing motion is is rather awkward, but it works for him. Inside now three and one, and you have to think Randy Wells is at least a little bit distracted by the guy over at first. No question about it. When talking about warm-up swings. Uh, We've had some fun with Ryan Braun and his warm up swings. He looks like a guy trying to knock a bag of cookies off the top of the refrigerator. Takes a very high swing. It's a lot of top hand. And once again, just reminds him. Runner goes, and I think that was ball four. It is. So everybody's safe. The hitters just doing things to remind themselves of mechanical issues that they want to get straight before they get in that batter's box. Take a look at our Galaxy pitch tracks. Galaxy, the official remodeler of the Chicago Cubs. I think Randy Wells thought that pitch caught corner right there, but 
in the estimation of C.B. Buckner behind the plate. It was off the plate, so now the Astros have runners at first and second with nobody out. The aforementioned Hunter Pence making his way to the plate. Giovanni Soto chatting with C.B. Buckner. I think he's saying C.B. It was close and could have added to my caught stealing percentage there. It was a good throw. It would have gotten born, but it was ball four to Sanchez, and now Pence who. Has hit 366 during the daytime. 0 for 4 in the opener. But he hit a ball as hard as you could hit it as he lined out to left with the bases loaded and nobody out in the third inning. On that play, the pitcher was at third base, Bud Norris. He did not tag up. Went a few steps down the line and not only did the Astros not get a run on that particular play, they didn't score at all in that third inning. One-0 -oh pitch, sinker for a strike. Astros have the worst record in baseball, 33 and 66. A mammoth 20 games out in the division. It's low and inside, two and one. A lot of people around baseball are wondering if in a couple of weeks Hunter Pence will still be wearing an Astros uniform. If you look at this Astros ball club, uh, you would have to say Hunter Pence uh, at this point is the face of the franchise. That would be a tough pill to swallow. Johnson makes a grab. Bourne tags up and gets to third with one out. And this play yesterday was, I think, a pretty key one. You just never know what would have transpired had they gotten this run. Well, yeah, that was the hardest hit ball maybe of the entire day. Yeah, and fortunately for the Cubs, they had the pitcher running at third base, a guy who's very inexperienced in those particular situations. His initial reaction was to break for home plate, and by the time he was able to get back to the bag at third, no chance to tag up and score at that point. Huge missed opportunity for the Astros yesterday. Well, they have another chance today. Runners at the corners with one out for Carlos Lee. Nothing for three in the opener with a walk and a run. And it's not been a good strikeout candidate this year. Strikes out just once every 10 plus plate appearances. Oh and two. Nice grab by the fan. And about the fourth row in the upper deck right off of first base. Him up behind the plate. Soto right back to the barrier and no play. I thought there might be enough wind blowing up above the roof of the stadium to push that ball back into play behind home plate, but unfortunately it ends up at three or four rows behind the backstop. And you see the flags blowing out toward left center field. First inning has been a real problem for Randy. And for the entire starting staff, for that matter. He's battling a jam here. And another 0 2 is low. They seem to have come in bunches.
One two change up swing and a miss it was up. Not where Randy wanted it. But Lee missed it. Got away with one there. Change up belt high right in the middle of the plate but. Well, Caballo swings right through it something you rarely see as you mentioned he doesn't strike out much. Or a big guy. But swung right through that change up. Chris Johnson with two outs. Swing and a miss. Bourne started it with a single. Sanchez walked. But then Pence flied to right. Lee punched out. And so on one on Chris Johnson, the third baseman. Make it 0 and 2. Back to back sliders in nearly the same location, the same result. A weak swing at a pitch that ended up out of the strike zone. Looks like they want to go in with a fastball here. I'm not sure Geo is sold on this pitch. Ooh. Worked out though, didn't it? <laughs> so Wells gets out of it as the Astros stranded pair. The Cubs are coming up against Juan D. Rodriguez. Against left hander Wandy Rodriguez. Reed Johnson's done a really nice job in limited duty this season. He's in right. Starlin Castro, the shortstop, bat second. Ramirez, big game winning home run yesterday. Baker's at first for Pena. Soto Bird Soriano with a big day in game one. Darwin Barney hits eighth and Randy Wells ninth. Take a look at the Astros defensively today. El Caballo, Cliff Lee out there in left field. Michael Bourne in center. Hunter Pence in right. Cliff Lee with Eight outfield assists this season. Hunter Pence with nine in right. The Astros have 22 outfield assists as a unit. Johnson, Sanchez, Altuve, and Wallace across the infield today. Corporan doing the catching for left hander Wandy Rodriguez. Fastball, curveball, changeup, no secrets. The Cubs have seen a lot of Wandy Rodriguez. And as I mentioned earlier, when the curveball is good, he is usually good. Yep. He throws it a lot. As it starts Reed Johnson with a fastball for a strike. Reed has been a doubles machine. 17 two base hits and just 134 at bats. I, think I may have called him Cliff Lee. Of course, that would be some kind of a miracle for Cliff Lee to be playing left field for the Astros today. It's Carlos Lee. C. Lee. Fastball low to make it two and one. Astros have had the better scoring chances so far in this series, but they've only scored two runs in ten innings. 
Cubs with one big inning, a four run fifth yesterday, highlighted by Soriano and Ramirez home runs. That was all the pitching staff would need. Foul back to make it two and two. Rodriguez is 32 years old, born in Santiago Rodriguez in the Dominican Republic. Product of the Astros Dominican Academy. You can see Rob Zombie in the ballpark today. <laughs> More human than human. Kinds of celebrities out here at the ballpark. They try to stay incognito, but our camera guys find them. Rob Zombie or Zach Galifianakis forgot to shave last week. He's trim. Heavy air today. It's pretty humid. And the threat of rain will exist the rest of the day. And he got him. For strike three. Anytime you talk about a pitcher featuring a breaking ball and saying it's a key pitch for him, it's not only a key pitch to throw in the strike zone, it's almost as important to be able to control it out of the strike zone. This time on a two strike pitch to Reed Johnson, he bounces that curveball on home plate, and Reed can't get a piece of it to stay alive. Brings up Starlin Castro. Comes in at a healthy 301. You see the on base percentage just at 329. Thing you'd like to see Starlin add into his offensive repertoire. A few more walks as he swings away at the first pitch. Pence will drift toward right center and make the catch. That's the 308th out Castro has made leading the National League this season. So two outs, and here comes Ramirez. Now Castro keeping that batting average right around the 300 mark pretty consistently all season but it makes you wonder if he were able to draw two or three more walks per week that batting average would shoot up uh, 10 15 20 points over the course of a season if he could just take a few more walks not to mention the benefits you would have of getting him on base a little more often. Well a good example Carlos Pena is hitting 224. So Castro's 77 points better in terms of the batting average, but because Pena has walked 53 times, he has a higher on base percentage. I think the other part of it is not only would Castro draw a few more walks, but he'd get in better counts. Mm -hmm. You know, and everybody's speculating that as he gets. A little bigger, a little stronger, a little older, a little more experienced that he's going to hit more home runs. Well, in order to do that, you need to get yourself into those good hitters counts where you can take aggressive swings, where you can get predictable pitches in counts. That's when the home run totals will start to go up. Another fly ball, and it's Pence again. So Rodriguez a clean one two three first inning we go to the second Wells back to work nothing nothing.
the ball game yesterday, the fastest runner on the Astros roster going down that first baseline, Darwin Barney coming over from his second base position, was so focused on the baseball, he hit the back side of the bag, but quick feet on the part of both players to avoid a potential disaster down there at first base. Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brood, Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Wallace Altuve and Corporan for the Astros against Brandy Wells. We want to welcome those men and women around the globe serving our country. Watching on the Armed Forces Network once again today. Two and oh. All has started yesterday and went one for three. Pounded on the ground foul. A little tweak on the Astros coaching staff. The bench coach Al Padrique is working third base this afternoon. Dave Clark not with the club today. He's expected back tomorrow. Bobby Meacham over at first. Ground ball base hit out into right center. Follow all of today's stats and info in real time with Cubs in game live only at CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by Honda. The diminutive Jose Altuve. He was leading all of the minors at a 389 batting average before he got brought up a few days ago. Third major league game here today. He's playing second. Takes a strike. Got a switch hitter on deck, Corper on the catcher. And then Rodriguez, the pitcher. Foul tip, strike two. Oh, and Randy Wells isn't pitching or throwing a side session or in uniform in general. You can generally find him at the guitar store. Got a nice collection going of about 50 guitars. Oh, many uh, vintage models. About six or seven that he actually plays. You could waste a whole afternoon at Guitar oh, Center. Absolutely. Couldn't you? It's just foul past third. Now you go into Guitar Center and there's some guy that maybe is the lead guitarist for a band that picks up a guitar, plugs it into the amp, like that guy, <laughs> and just goes to wailing on that thing. And that always embarrasses me because when you go in there and play the same three chords over and over, you, hey, put the guitar down, sir. But yeah, I can spend all kinds of time at Guitar Center. A pop up, and it'll be Castro and shallow left. No stairway. Don't guys show off. I just wish I could show off. Well, Randy Wells could show off here by punching out Oparan, backup catcher here with the Astros in 76 at bats this season. He struck out 23 times, walked only twice. As a left handed hitter, 17 strikeouts and no walks. Expand that zone. Of course, it helps if you get ahead first and then expand the zone, but uh, it's a guy that does not want to walk. Both starting catchers today from Puerto Rico Giovanni Soto and Carlos Corporan. Got his first major league hit off a of shortstop, Paul Janish of the Reds back in 2009 when Corporan was with the Brewers. Off the glove of Baker, but Barney with a nice play as he feeds Wells. 
Good back up there by Barney and also a good job by Wells to keep going toward first. We bring up a good point Len as long as that ball is still in play the play continues. Jeff Baker looked like he was getting ready to throw to second base to initiate a possible double play but it deflected off his glove. Fortunately Darwin Barney continued on the play as did Randy Wells able to get the out at first. A sometimes switch hitting Wandy Rodriguez. Three pitchers on their current roster with a surname Rodriguez. Wandy, a starter, and a couple of right handers, Eneoe Rodriguez and Fernando. One and two. Only one other early game today. That's the A's and the Yankees. Rich Harden, the former Cub, facing A.J. Burnett. And they are scoreless like we are in the top of the second. Game being played in the Bronx. And he gets him for his third strikeout. First time through the order. After an inning and a half, nothing, nothing. on Comcast Sportsnet. Watch the Central Division champion Chicago Rush take on the Milwaukee Mustangs at Allstate Arena. Don't miss a minute of the action. Rush Mustangs tonight at 7. Only on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friend. Cubs will bat in the second inning. She's happy about that. Baker, Soto, and Bird for the Cubs. And come on out tomorrow Cubs and Astros in the series finale at 120 the first 32,000 fans will be able to give a big thumbs up to the Cubs with a Denison jeans exclusive thumbs up giveaway. Denison brand is from the makers of Levi's jeans and can be found exclusively at Target. For more info and to purchase tickets visit Cubs.com. Jeff Baker was probably the first Cubs hitter at the ballpark today. Lee will make the grab. 
I'm not facing a left handed starter he probably figured he would be in the lineup and why not he's a 500 hitter before that at bat. Seven for 14 coming in with four doubles against Wandy Rodriguez a little overly aggressive in that first at bat. Geo seven for 16 with a home run against Rodriguez. You would imagine the Cubs and the Astros for that matter near the bottom in the majors in terms of which is per plate appearance the Red Sox see almost four per Yankees are second on that list the Cubs 27th the Astros 26th pretty aggressive lineup and he's out on strikes. It might have been a called strike three, even though Gio took a half swing at it. Two punch outs now for Rodriguez. You see Marlon Burke wearing the sunglasses at the plate. This is one of those days, it's, it's kind of tough. The sun peaks out from time to time. Mostly a cloudy, overcast day, but. Those look like those high visibility, kind of those yellow lenses that uh, increase the contrast. Maybe a little bit easier to pick up the baseball on a hazy day like this. Regular dark glasses uh, might not be to your benefit on a day like this. This is his 999th career game in the big leagues. Rodriguez is just 5'11, but he towers over his second baseman. Jose Altuve is listed at 5'7. I've seen reports where they say he's 5'5. Five, five. Great swing by Bird, still alive. The prerequisites to be a good second baseman don't necessarily include height. I, mean, I guess on a line drive that he's not able to get up high enough to catch it would hurt him in that particular situation, but we've seen him turn some lightning quick double plays. It's a great story as Bird cranks this one a deep left center goal. His fifth homer of the year, and it's one nothing. A quick swing by Marlon Bird. Talk about quick hands. Got a middle of the plate fastball at 90. Really drove that bat through the hitting zone in a hurry. That ball carried a long way, about three quarters of the way up the bleachers in left center field. I'm starting to win that home run battle here at home. Soriano went deep yesterday for the first time in over a month. Cubs have been out home at 51 47 here at Wrigley Field, but that split was a lot more drastic during the first couple of months. Called strike three on a curveball that caught the outside corner. But a two out homer by the Cubs center fielder, Marlon Bird. 
one nothing Northsiders. A dollar eighty nine, but you don't have to remember it to love it. Prices and participation may vary for a limited time, a la carte only. No place like home. One ball, one strike. Michael Bourne. And the third, two and one. Uh, a few people uh, screaming for anti M over the last uh, week or so. Nice, nasty thunderstorms. You know, the kind that wake you up from a dead sleep. Thunder and lightning and pounding rain. Side. It's full three and two. Boyne let off the game with a single. The Astros would put the first two on, but did not get a run in that opening inning. Lined to Barney. You need a neighborhood sticker on a canoe. Well, in the winter, you put a picnic table out there to save your parking spot. Yeah. In the summer, you just put a canoe. Pretty good chance we'll see Carlos Marmol if a save opportunity presents itself today. Gave him one last shot. Before the night yesterday, and he was really good. Face two guys struck out both of them. Sinker strike to Sanchez, one and two. Also, be a good idea to get him back in that role here at home before a potentially pretty difficult three city trip against the uh, three best teams in the division. Now you're going to need all hands on deck and it certainly sets up the Cubs bullpen much better when you have Carlos Marmol definitely coming into close ball games. You to use Sean Marshall in that setup role. Ideally get Kerry Wood going again. James Marshall and Jeff Samarja have been very good lately earlier in the ball game. So if Marmol can fill that ninth inning role and do it the way he has done so well over the last couple of years, that would really set up that bullpen well. Another full count, three and two. Hence on deck. Good 
to back 3 2 sliders. One to Bourne, the other to Sanchez, and both times Wells gets outs. Hey, fans, check out the new Cubs Kids Club presented by ComEd, the official kids club of the Chicago Cubs. Help your favorite young Cubs fan earn his or her pinstripes as a member of the Cubs Kids Club, and they'll receive kids specific perks, experiences, and merchandise throughout the 2011 baseball season. Visit Cubs.com to sign up today. The frenetic Hunter Pence always oh, got his feet moving. Castro backhand, strong throw to Baker. And the first one, two, three for Randy Wells. Cubs lead, one nothing. Season to purchase tickets is at Cubs.com. Call 1 800 the Cubs or visit the Wrigley Field box office. First pitch strike from Wandy Rodriguez to all eight he has faced. Darwin Barney sends a rainbow out toward Michael Bourne, two time gold glover, no problem, one away. Former catcher Randy Wells. One of our favorite websites, and I know you check it out occasionally, is baseballreference.com. They keep adding fun little things. They now have a new section where you can. Type in franchise one, franchise two, and it gives you all the trades made between the two franchises. And so, just for fun, I looked at the uh, Cubs and Astros. They have not made a trade with one another since August of 2002. And Tom Flash Gordon was sent to Houston. The players to be named later. Before that, Previous Cubs Astros trade was back in 1995. The Cubs got Luis Gonzalez and Scott Service for Rick Wilkins. A fun little thing. Mm -hmm. Right near the bag, and Wallace will step on first, two outs. And certainly, you see it, uh, especially nowadays in the game of baseball. There are certain teams that have had good histories of trades between each other. There, 
They seem to always go back and forth. Uh, I have a need right now. You have a surplus of what I need. Let's make a deal. And uh, you have trading partners that you seemingly go back to again and again and again because it has worked out well for both teams. How about this over the last 30 years. The Cubs and Cardinals have made two trades. That's it. And that kind of goes back to same division bitter rivals. They had the uh, Jeff Facero deal in 2002 Cubs traded the lefty to St. Louis for players to be named later and then back in June of 95 Todd Zeal sent to the Cubs. I know for years and years the Giants and Dodgers were that way they rarely made deals uh, between those two franchises because they were competing in the same division and bitter rivals. October 1979 Mike Tyson got traded from the Cardinals to the Cubs. No not that not Mike that Tyson. Mike Tyson. Donnie Moore went the other way. The uh, most famous Cub Cardinal deal involved Lou Brock. 1964 bring that up. There's some big names all along the way Looper debt. It's involved in a deal Don Kessinger. In the mid 70s. Anyway, check it out. It's fun to kind of sift through all the deals Cubs have made with the different franchises. Hank Sauer, 1956, traded by the Cubs to the Cardinals. Talked about it many times in the past. Hank Sauer was my first hitting instructor in the minor leagues at the time with the San Francisco Giants. Is he fun to be around? 2 2 now to Reed Johnson fouled off. Yankees and Red Sox have not made a trade since 97. Their most famous trade, if not the most famous trade in the history of baseball, January 3rd, 1920. Babe Ruth was purchased. By the Yankees from the Red Sox for a hundred thousand dollars. Rodriguez strikes out Johnson and the Cubs done in the third. They lead one nothing on the bird homer back in the second. Four or more with the KFC 10 piece family feast, just $20. And our ATT trivia question Hall of Fame weekend. So, which player has come the closest to being unanimously selected 
to the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's never happened. The player's gotten 100% of the vote. And because it's never happened, it probably never will. Now you get to this point where you say, well, if Babe Ruth didn't get in unanimously, how can player X get in? Right. I mean, Greg Maddox will not get in unanimously. And that in and of itself is a joke. He won't. Diving stop, but it trickles away from Ramirez and Carlos Lee as a leadoff single. That's their third one. All their hits have come to lead off an inning. And what the voters who don't vote for Maddox will say is he's a Hall of Famer. I'm going to vote for him or was going to vote for him, just not this year. For whatever reason. Yeah, it's kind of like you look at the case of Burt Blylevin. Did his numbers improve over the years? You know, his percentage of votes went up every year until ultimately he got enough votes to go into the Hall of Fame, but it's not like he pitched during that time period. It's not like his numbers got better. I think what happens in terms of borderline Hall of Famers, Greg Maddox not being a part of this discussion, um, but talking with some people who do vote, they believe time is on their side. And if a guy is a Hall of Famer and deserves to be in, he will eventually get in. Andre Dawson had to wait a long time to get in. Fly ball to center. Pretty well hit by Johnson, but it's going to be caught by Bird. Lee's tagging. And he is in. Heads up play by Carlos Lee. Is, that ball was very deep out in center. Carlos Lee has come under heavy criticism down in Houston for his conditioning uh, occasional apparent lack of effort on the field but this was a heads up base running play on his part saw Marlon Bird square up to the ball realized it wasn't going to go over his head and when Marlon was backpedaling as he caught the ball El Caballo tagged up and moves into scoring position with one out the key play represents the tying run. Send lead at third, but Wallace is out two away. I think the theory is, and I do agree with this, I mean, it should be very difficult to get into the Hall of Fame, but the thought is it's kind of irreversible. Once you put a guy in, he's in. But if he's not in, you still can put him in later. And that's key when it comes to the steroid era. There will be a lot of wait and see attitudes. We've long thought Ron Sano should be in the Hall of Fame. And we continue to think that, and we'll always think that. We bring up the point about the steroid era, and certainly the hitters uh, who compiled the majority of their numbers during that time, uh, they're going to have a hard time getting into the Hall of Fame, at least for the foreseeable future, which in my eyes, Magnifies how good Greg Maddox was pitching during that era. Yep, you're right. Nice play by Aramis as the Astros strand a runner at third, and it took Wells just eight pitches to navigate through the fourth.
came the closest to being unanimously selected to the Hall of Fame. Tom Seaver, 1992, got 425 of 430 votes. Nolan Ryan missed perfection, so to speak, by six votes in 99. Cal Ripken by just eight in 07. And uh, Ty Cobb, 226 ballots, 222 yeses for Cobb. In the first draft class or Hall of Fame class of 1936. Babe Ruth way down on the list, 95%. Something else. I mean, Hank Aaron was on 406 of 415 ballots in 1982. Really? This born makes a catch. There were nine people who did not. Vote to put Hank Aaron into the Hall of Fame his first year of eligibility. Don't get it. And there's no question that the overwhelming majority of voters for the Hall of Fame take their duty very seriously. And occasionally you'll get a some cockamamie off the wall vote for somebody who has no business being in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I think realizing that one vote is not going to change anything whatsoever, but you know, kudos to those who do take their vote very seriously. Two and one on Aramis Ramirez. Big day today. As we talked last week with Dave Van Horn, the Ford C. Frick Award winner for broadcasters, and Roland Heeman. Congrats to him. The Buck O'Neill Lifetime Achievement Award. Pat Gillick goes into the Hall of Fame today. Three World Series championships. Two with Baltimore. One with the Philadelphia Phillies. Also the GM of the Baltimore Orioles. Great job in Seattle. Built the Blue Jays into a World Series champ. He was there from the beginning, 1977 and 94. Ramirez grounds out. And we put the Menards grounds crew in the grounds crew Hall of Fame if we could. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I have some issue with Pat Gillick going into the Hall of Fame as one of the greatest executives ever in the history of this game because he signed me as a free agent back in 1989. And anybody that would sign me as a free agent, you got to question him. I think that's why he got in. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. One of his greatest moves. Our good friend Jim Deshays, a left-hander, by the way, got a Hall of Fame vote because he's a great guy. He didn't have a Hall of Fame pitching career, but got a vote nonetheless. One nothing Cubs after four.
500 texter, you could win five five dollar foot long subs from Subway. We want to take an opportunity to wish a very happy 87th birthday to a lifelong Cub fan, Croy Ostergaard, who attended the last game the Cubs won in a World Series, October 12, 1945, against Detroit. He was home from uh, World War II in Italy, where he served with the Tenth Mountain Division. Went to Wrigley trying to get a ticket for game six. A fan saw him in uniform, offered him a spare ticket, and he watched the Cubs beat the Tigers in 12 innings. That's great. So happy 45th birthday today to Jeff Rain from your family and friends. Also, a congratulations to Tyler Brown, 18 year old Tyler Brown, who threw a perfect game at the USCAA World Series. For Spalding University. Congratulations to Tyler Brown. Corp around bounces and it's backhanded by Baker who feeds Wells at first. It was three to one. I also want to congratulate Kevin and Rachel Martin. I don't know if they're officially Kevin and Rachel Martin yet. But they're getting married today in Lombard. At least we got an invitation to their wedding a few months ago, but we obviously are here at the ballpark today, but I wanted to send out our best wishes to the Martins. Absolutely. Thanks for the invite. Looks like all the groomsmen were sitting out there in the bleachers. Well, they're going to be late for the wedding. Barney to Baker to get Rodriguez. Almost getting into a nice groove as Michael Bourne will come up with two outs. And nobody on. Also, we wanted to mention uh, Bill Conlon, longtime Philadelphia sports columnist, gets the J.G. Taylor Spink Award in Cooperstown. And singer songwriter Terry Cashman will perform Talking Baseball on the 30th anniversary of that classic. Also mentioned Roland Heeman winning the Buck O'Neill Award for Lifetime Achievement. You know, Lynn, I don't know if there's another person in the game of baseball that has affected as many careers in some manner as Roland Heeman. Great point. As respected as anybody in the game. Warren takes a two out walk. The Buck O'Neill Award was started in 2007 to honor an individual whose efforts broaden the game's appeal and whose character, integrity, and dignity is comparable to the late Buck O'Neill. Died in 2006. O'Neill was the uh, first recipient of the award. Heeman is the second. They don't give it out every year necessarily, unless someone is deserving. Even a three time Major League Executive of the Year. 60 years of experience in pro baseball. 23 years as a general manager of the White Sox and the Orioles. And you got to know him really well. Five years as a senior executive vice president of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And in a game that has a tendency to grind people down and ultimately uh, show their darker side, 
I've never seen Roland Heeman without a smile on his face. He loves the game of baseball. He loves the people involved with the game of baseball. Rarely has a negative word to say about anything. One and nothing on Sanchez. Slider strike. It looked like a Michael Bourne was frustrated with himself down there at first base. Thought he had enough of a jump to perhaps steal a base and then thought better of it and stayed at first. And that pitch crossed the hitting zone, threw his hands in the air. Well, Wells is going to pick over there at first. Soto's throw. Got it. Good pick by Darwin Barney on a little bit of a short hop throw. This time Soto does get him to end the inning. Thanks. Huge crowd on hand today. We've staved off the rain to this point. The Cubs lead 1 0. A strike to Soto. Make it 0 and 2. A nice job by Randy Wells to keep Michael Bourne close at first base. Great job by Darwin Barney on a pick and tag out there at second base. The throw just a little bit short. The Cubs may have gotten a break right there. Big one. They'll take it. That's cranked to deep left for Soto. Gone. On an 0 2 pitch. 2 0. The catcher's dream right there. You nail the top base dealer in the game and then turn around and hit a home run. Well, recently Giovanni Soto has been very passive with two strikes but this time gets an 89 mile an hour fastball at the top of the strike zone nothing passive about this swing drives that ball out of here into the front row of the bleachers in left field. He 
Cubs. A Marlon Bird who gave the Cubs the lead with a two out home run to deep left center in the second. It's safe to say if Wandy Rodriguez had his brothers, every game he pitched would be at Minute Maid Park. He has really thrived there. His ERA is a, over a run and a half, actually about exactly a run and a half better at home than it's been on the road in his career. 343 at Minute Maid Park, almost five on the road. Maybe it's that security blanket of the deep center field at uh, at the park in Houston. He feels like he's got an area of the ballpark where he can bail out if he gets into trouble. Just throw the pitch up and away from a right-handed hitter and let him hit it as far as they can to center. Very little chance anybody's going to go deep to center field in that ballpark. And he walks Bird. Cubs have two hits, both home runs. No, a newborn Cubs fan. The newborn fan club is the perfect gift to showcase what it means to be a Cub for life. Receive a customized photo announcing the birth on the Wrigley Field marquee. A Cubs birth certificate, Cubs baby stocking cap, and a Cubs rookie of the year onesie. Perfect for parents and friends alike. Visit Cubs.com for more info and to sign up today. Rodriguez really hasn't labored at all. Given up the two home runs, but this is the first time he's worked from the stretch. Born has it, and then Bird will retreat to first. Now, base runners have had uh, great success when running on Wandy Rodriguez this year. 15 attempts, 14 stolen bases. Ron behind home plate has had his own issues throwing out runners only 14 percent on the season. We know the Cubs don't run a lot and especially on a day like this here at Wrigley where the ball seems to be jumping. We definitely don't want to run into any outs on the bases but this would appear to be a good combination uh, if you wanted to be aggressive. Barney is aggressive. Lee will slide and make the grab and Bird has to head back to first again. Carlos not known for his defensive prowess out there in left field. We got a pretty good jump on this sinking line drive off the bat of Darwin Barney able to make a nice sliding catch. I think this ballpark really brings out the best in him. He enjoys the banter out and left with the fans in the bleachers. He's always hit well here. His career certainly appears to be on the downside but. Big time performer here at Wrigley Field, going back to his White Sox days. Bob, there is a massive something flying around and yeah. getting near the booth. A winged creature. Yeah. A wasp or a hornet or something. It has a big stinger on here. It's some summer, you know. Happen. Well, we're going to need that uh, particular insect to relocate somewhere because when we go on the road, he's liable to build a nest and we'll have a whole family of them. Generally, if you're nice to them, they'll be nice to you. Or so it goes. Well, if you smash them with a newspaper, you guaranteed they're going to be nice to you. We get the PETA people calling now. We love wasps. Called strike three to end the inning. 
Soto started it with his ninth homer of the year. Comes with two hits today. Both are home runs. It's two nothing. One place to go for the best local sports news and highlights at Sportsnet Central every night at 6 30, 10, 10 30, and midnight. Only on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Nice. Yeah, I just scared him away. I yeah. just, you know, wanted him to go somewhere else. Anywhere else. Two nothing. <laughs> you notice I use the Astros media guy, <laughs> not the Cubs. I was going to somehow relate that to your career at the plate. But I won't. Swing and a miss. Well, the Astros used to have the killer bees. Whatever that creature is, it looks like a killer bee. Bagwell, Biggio, L, Berkman. Berkman. Now it's born and bourgeois. Gotta have somebody in their lineup. The surname starting with B. Our killer bee is Bob Brenley. <laughs> Our bee killer. Two and two. There it is. Uh -huh. Sanchez was at the plate. And Bourne was caught stealing. That was close. Three and two. Center field for a base hit. You saw Bird was shaded slightly toward the other way. Pence came in tied for fifth in the league in batting. One for two scored a run in the All Star game and saved a run with an outfield assist. Swing and a miss. With a knee, in fact. Second career All Star game. He did not appear back in 2009.
Uh, Hunter Pence, a very unique character in the game of baseball. We even had a lot of fun with his uh, lack of calves. High energy player, both defensively and in that batter's box, uses one batting glove on the bottom hand and chokes way up on the bat, something you rarely see, especially from a middle of the order run producer. And you were talking earlier, you know, will Hunter Pence move on at the trade deadline? He's certainly a very valuable chip for a team that's looking forward to postseason baseball, but as I mentioned earlier, he has quickly become the face of the franchise down there in Houston. That would probably not meet with a lot of fan support if they moved their right fielder. Two and two. Just a couple of sliders in this at bat. Castro will charge and throw to first in time. That was a good decision that time by Starlin Castro once again. We're starting to see him make better choices defensively. Took a quick peek at second base to see if they had a play on Sanchez. They might have had an opportunity to get the lead runner there at second base, but it would have involved an awkward throw back across his body as momentum was carrying him toward first base. So just decided to take the sure out at first. Good location. Strike one to lead. Good read there by Sanchez coming around and he will get in. Just got his fingers on the plate with that head first slide and it's two to one. No hesitation. He knew that ball was not going to be caught and it's an RBI single for Carlos Lee. And one of the last things a runner does at second base before he takes his lead is turn around and see where the outfielders are positioned. Sanchez knew that Marlon Bird was playing pretty much straight away center field. That ball was going to get down, and Marlon Bird still makes it a fairly close play at home plate with a good, strong throw right on the money. Yeah, a lot of your decisions are, are made much quicker if you just take that second before you take your lead off and see where all the defenders are. Have that picture in your mind as the ball is put into play. If you remember where everybody's playing, you should be able to get a much better jump. You got Samarja and Russell up. It's only the sixth, and Randy Wells has pitched well, but right now the tying run is on base. Considering what's happened throughout the course of the first three months of season for Randy, Quaddy is not going to wait around to get somebody ready. And one thing you have to keep in the back of your mind if you're Mike Quaddy, Brad Mills hit for Brett Wallace in the ball game yesterday, so I don't think he would hesitate to do that again today should Mike Quaddy bring in James Russell to face the Astros first baseman who's in that on deck circle. Wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Brad Mills take him down. There's Johnson. Slider missed outside. You have to kind of go through that flow chart in your mind. I like James Marshall on Brett Wallace. But if they pinch hit for Brett Wallace, do I like James Russell on whatever the right handed pinch hitter that makes his way up to the plate? Do I like that matchup? Because I'm just as likely to get that one. Hit and run as Lee took off and Johnson hit it foul. Andy, uh, 
pretty honest about his feelings. Pretty interesting quote to reporters after his last start. He said the swagger hasn't been there. I guess you try to talk yourself through innings or through things instead of letting my pitches work. So a much better day on the mound to this point, but it's a tight one. Cubs leading by one here in the sixth. Well, his stuff has been much better today. Able to locate that sinker down at the bottom of the strike zone. He's mixed in just enough change ups. And the slider has been really good on that outside corner of the plate to the right handed hitters. And he's gotten away with some today. I think back to that changeup that Carlos Lee swung through back in the first inning. Definitely a mistake pitch, not where he wanted it. But for one of the rare times this year, he got lucky. Ready for a one two swing and a miss on a slider. Chris Johnson has had all kinds of issues with that Randy Wells slider today. He just pounds it out there on that outside corner. Johnson must identify that pitch as a fastball. The way he's swinging at it has come up empty in back. Well, first at bat and now this at bat. Now Baker will play behind Lee with two outs and a left handed hitter at the plate. Now maybe uh, he will hold him. I think you need to hold him. Uh, as we saw earlier, Carlos Lee, uh, he picks his spots. He used to be a stolen base threat. And as his career moved on, he'd run less and less and less. But if you don't hold him on, he'll get enough of a jump to try to steal a base and put the tying run in scoring position. The uh, rare big blasts of sunshine. A somewhat overcast afternoon. Just like that, it's gone. Reed Johnson playing about as deep as you can and right. Bird pretty deep out in center. Cut off those gaps. Keep Lee from scoring the tying run. One and two. Steel doing talking about coverage at second. I think so. Yeah, just making sure everybody knows what's going on here. Two strike count with two outs in the inning. Little chance that Carlos Lee might take off for second base, but just making sure that everybody was aware that it, it could happen. He goes and it's grounded right to Castro. Steps on second base. That worked out well. Castro shuffling toward the bag with Lee running. Brown ball took him right there.
them firsthand. Well, now you have that chance. Join former Cup players Lee Smith or Jody Davis on these special tours on August 2nd, 4th, and 6th. For more information or to purchase tickets, call 1 800 The Cubs or visit Cubs.com. Top of the order here, Reed Johnson takes a strike. Astros got on the board. Cubs lead 2 1. Curveball just missed. Huge crowd here, as we mentioned, 40,486. Rodriguez was in a very good stretch. He had five starts in which he had a 1.77 ERA, rather nine starts, five wins. But he has followed that up with a very rough start to July. This has been by far his best outing in the month of July. Dropped by Johnson, still time, and Wallace kept his toe on the base. Reed Johnson has had a real hard time staying back on Wandy Rodriguez. Today. He's hit a number of balls hard foul down that third baseline, finally able to keep one fair. Johnson didn't handle it cleanly, but it was hit so hard he had enough time to recover and throw on in time to get Reed Johnson. Marge it back up. Three and one to Castro. Mills has some history with the Cubs. 11 seasons as a minor league manager, about half that with the Cubs, 87 to 92. Hunter Pinson Wright makes a catch. Mills was the Cubs' advanced scout in 2001. He played in the Cubs' minor league system as well. Watch Comcast Sportsnet game replays on demand with Xfinity TV from Comcast. Don't miss the action. Call 1 800 Xfinity today. Mills, by the way, did have some big league time as an infielder, played with the Montreal Expos. There's Terry Francona's roommate at the University of Arizona. Quick one, two, three for Rodriguez. We head off to the seventh. Cubs two, Astros one.
Action, the Cubs lead, and the Laurels have two home runs. Marlon Bird with two outs in the second. Deep left center, and Giovanni Soto on an 0-2 pitch. Head off the fifth with a blast to left. For five on the season for Marlon Bird, number nine for Giovanni Soto, and Jeff Samarja takes over for Randy Wells here to start the seventh inning. Nice job by Randy today. Only five hits by the Astros. He did walk a couple of batters. They did not hurt him as Giovanni Soto was able to gun down Michael Bourne at second base to erase one of those walks. Only the lone run. Lead off single by Sanchez in the sixth. Later came around to score on the broken bat single by Carlos Lee. Looks like both starters will be done after six as Rodriguez's spot due up third this inning. All one to Altuve. Broke his bat. That's a fair ball. Ramirez with time. Your good friend Kevin Butler, Super Bowl kicker for the Bears, will conduct the stretch. Corporan and then Matt Downs is in the on deck circle. Marge is 0-1, swung on and missed. Marge just strikes out Corporan. Two away. The one and only Sir Paul McCartney is coming to Wrigley Field Sunday, July 31st, Monday, August 1st. Treat your best customers and guests to the ultimate VIP experience in a private suite at the friendly confines for these historic shows. As it means, suites are limited and available now. Call 773 404 4200. More details and to book your suite today. It is Wandy Rodriguez take the at bat with nobody on and two outs. How about that? A base hit. You called him a sometime switch hitter. I don't think Wandy's ever really sure which side of the plate he's going to hit from. That's why he wears that double sided helmet, but a little soft liner into right field for a base hit that'll chase Jeff Samarja from the game in favor of James Russell. So here is the lefty Russell. It's a Verizon call to the pin. We're in the seventh, and we'll be back.
Risen call to the pin. It's Michael Bourne against James Russell. With Rodriguez at first two out swing and a miss on a slider. Can't say enough about the job James Russell has done. 13 consecutive scoreless innings out of the bullpen. For the fifth longest single season scoreless inning streak by a Cubs left handed reliever since 2000. Fly ball deep to center. Bird is on the track, but enough room to end the inning. Here comes Kevin Butler with a stretch. Guest conductor for Take Me Out to the Ball Game, former Bears kicker Kevin Butler. McDonald's for a dollar eighty nine. Always great to have with us, longtime Bears kicker Kevin Butler. Well, it's great to be here, y'all. I really appreciate the opportunity to come back, and uh, what a beautiful day! Great day, sellout crowd, good score, Cubs leading. That's right. It's all good. It's Wandy Rodriguez will pitch here in the bottom of the seventh against Jeff Baker. You know, Kevin, as they say, the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. And uh, we were talking between innings. You're a very proud papa of a kicker in his own right. Well, I am. My son, Drew, is uh, a fifth-year senior down at the University of Georgia. And uh, they're getting ready to crank up college football. And um, we're, we're real excited about that, you know, with uh, foot, pro football kind of being wavering back and forth right now. I think everybody is concentrating on in college football. And uh, we're really excited about Drew, very proud of what he's done. Now you were telling me you just got some good news from the, uh, from the yeah. media department yeah. there in Georgia. Why don't you tell the fans about that? Well, it was really cool. I mean, as a father, you're just are proud of your kids no matter what they do. But my son called me up the other day. He said, I just, got, I just found out, Dad, they named the all-time University of Georgia football team. And he goes, you made uh, place kicker. And I said, oh, that's great. He goes, and I made punter. So ah, uh, not too many times you can uh, get in a scenario like that. But uh, he, he's worked awful hard at it, and he's uh, – like every parent, he's a much better young man than I was. <laughs> Let's just be honest. <laughs> two and two on a Clemson product, Jeff Baker. Sean Marshall, who at the VCU.
Cubs leading because of two home runs. They have two hits all day and they've both counted big time. They've been strong, strong and long. Uh, the longest field goal you ever kicked at any level. 78 yards in, in practice at Georgia. Wind was just wow. tremendously blowing in my face. Um, it was really amazing. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It was at my back, I think. Um, yeah, you know, getting out there. But, uh, you know, in a game, it was 60 yards uh, against Clemson. A uh, little alumni guy out there right now. But uh, in the pros, I think it was 255 yarders. I remember Dick, uh, the first game of my career, I came out and I had a pretty good percentage of uh, 50 plus kicks. And uh, he put me out there right before halftime for a 64 yard field goal. And I think I almost took Keith Van Horn's head off. Um, <laughs> it, it didn't make it. And I remember Mike kind of came up to me when we were jogging in at halftime and he said, I guess, kid, that was your one chance. You're never going to get it again. I'm like, golly, it's my first game. That's it. Your record setting chance. Yep, yep. But uh, we had plenty of times to set other records. I like. Um, the new camera they have that hovers over the field and the look behind the kicker mm -hmm. for field goals, it makes it look as difficult as it is to well, hit the, you know, between it, the uprights. It's kind of like, you know, I did the first pitch today and you get up there on that mound and all of a sudden the catcher squatted down and everything looked a lot farther away. And uh, it is like that. You know, you, you look at uh, those goal posts and, you know, as a kicker, we don't like to, to stare them down, but they certainly uh, become smaller and smaller the more you look at them. And, you know, when you get sometimes in different stadiums, you just feel better when you're kicking. If those goalposts kind of sit right on the end of the stadium, they really do make them look closer. Now, Soldier Field is one where we had a lot of room behind the goalposts, and sometimes it would make it really look longer. So when you would line up for a field goal, obviously you'd look at, at the uprights. At what point did you not look at anymore and just concentrated on foot the ball? You know, I, I think it's uh, when you take that deep breath, you know, when I went back, I took three steps back, two steps over, and I kind of took a deep breath. And at that point, I was just looking for the you know, peripheral vision, seeing that ball come back, and I'd get into my step. And I'd always get nervous after the kick. Because you, you really feel like you, you just realize, well, gosh, if I'd have missed that, we'd be in some trouble. Or, <laughs> you can't control or, it once you kick it. <laughs> no, after you kick, you, you kind of let all that emotion out. But, uh, you know, it was uh, had some great teams around me. We got a, another great one going into the Hall of Fame this year in Richard Dent. So just a lot of, uh, a lot of proud uh, people that I played with that uh, keep getting more, more awards as we get older. Kevin, I want to ask you, how effective is... That that timeout to freeze the kicker. You see it all the time late in a close game. Uh, yeah. Team's got some timeouts left, and they they call it right before the kick uh, to freeze the kicker. Is that effective? No, not. I mean, for me, it was just extra TV time. I used it. To, you know, they don't ever put the TV kicker on TV until you get the timeout. But you know, just like I was saying, if you sit out there and you stare at that goalpost and. That thing starts creeping in and getting smaller and smaller. I, I certainly think it can work in uh, your opponent's favor. But, you know, at that point, I'd go in and I'd just try to act like the players and get in that huddle. And, you know, for that few seconds, I considered myself a football player and, until they got back and they said, okay, it's time to kick now. You're just a kicker. <laughs> Three and two. Giovanni Soto. Would you have liked to have the two point conversion when you played way back when? You know, I don't know. A couple. I, we, we had it in college. And, you know, it comes up very few times. Um, I know I would have not been actively involved in a two-point play. I would have been a decoy. They said, Kevin, go left. We're going to take everything right. And uh, that's the best way we could get it. And, but, you know, it, it certainly is an advantage if you're behind and you're trying to, to do everything you can to tie that game up. I think it's an exciting play. And I think the NFL uh, you know, is good by having it. I think. The main reason they do it is for the armchair quarterbacks because it does give coaches more decisions that previously they yeah. didn't have to make. Puts a little bit more uh, thinking into your decisions. And, uh, you know, anytime you can give up one point and you go for two, that certainly could come back and haunt you in a, in a big way. And uh, I think that's probably what a lot of the coaches are wary of. Arlen Bird with two outs. We're with Kevin Butler. We always enjoy chatting with Robbie Gold. Very Robbie is bear. tremendous. I mean, you know, he is, uh, and, you know, I, I think about my career stats, 73%. If, if Robbie was 73% now, 
Robbie would be serving beer out here. He would not have a job. You know, <laughs> it's just he would not have a job in the NFL. He would be doing something else because the the, the level of um, uh, performance has just gone up each year. And you know, you have to be 80 to 85 percent to be a successful kicker in the NFL. And the kids have done great. They've got better coaching. Uh, they learn earlier, and they become mentally stronger. And I'm telling you, we have one of the best, if not the best, in the league in Robbie. And uh, I think it would be great for the Bears to just kind of hold on to him um, because we are that type of a team. You know, we, we get the close games, and every time you can pull three points out and count on that guy in these kind of conditions, um, those guys just don't come around every day. You're right. Three and one to Bird. Plus, you know, complimenting him like that, I hope he's going to take me to play golf somewhere because they get paid about ten times more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> Three and two. He follows the Cubs pretty closely. He does, and he's a great, you know, I talked to Robbie a good bit during the season. I always call him after a big kick or something, leave him the message. But he's uh, he's talked to my son, too, and, and given him some great advice. And. Um, you know, it'd be it'd be nothing more than another chapter in the storybook to see the Bears try to pull Drew up here and, and get him to play. We got a great punter in, in Brad right now, but uh, um, I think Drew will have an opportunity in the NFL, and, and certainly I'm biased, and I'd like to see him with the Chicago Bears. That one gets by there you everybody. Go. Bird's going to try to make it to second. The throw there, yeah. late. Good hustle by Marlon Bird. It's a single and an error on Johnson on the throw to allow Bird to get the second. Great hustle there. It's a swinging bunt, if you will. Little roller down the third baseline. As always, Marlon Bird motoring out of that batter's box makes it a tough play for Chris Johnson, who throws it away at first. Marlon will end up in scoring position for Alfonso Soriano. Now, Kevin, I wanted to ask you, when I was growing up uh, back in Ohio, I was a big Browns fan. Lou Groza. Absolutely. Are there any more straight-on field goal kickers in football anymore? I, I don't think so. You know, the last guy that I, I saw in the league was Steve Cox, and he was with Cleveland. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end, he was probably my first four years in the league, and, and honestly, he was the last guy that I, I really saw do that. Um, I had a guy at the University of Georgia, Steve Crumley, followed me when I graduated and he was a straight on kicker. Um, I think with the soccer thing and, and the kids learning how to kick like that it, it really is a much more powerful much more um, accurate kick. You're, you're using your whole body uh, when, when the toe was in there you know it was straight on. Mark Mosley was probably one of the best uh, straight on kickers uh, in, in, in the modern era. Um, and, uh, you know, the way the kids are built now, they're bigger, they're stronger. And if you can use your whole body to kick and control that ball, you're going to kick it longer and more accurate. And I think that's what we see now. You're getting more of your foot on the ball, too. Right? Yeah, you are. And, uh, it, you know, the, that toe, the old toe shoe, and my backup kicker with the Bears was Steve McMichael. So Steve would put that toe cleat on and. That was that was intimidating enough just to see him get back there. <laughs> um, now we have not had him in the booth, but uh, well, not had since, a little bit not of since a, the last time. Yeah, an interesting uh, moment was it with Angel Hernandez. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So don't get kicked out today, okay? Oh Kevin? no, no, yeah. no. I'm Be about, nice. We're about to see a two-run homer right here. <laughs> One strike on Soriano. Just when you think you've seen everything, a seventh-inning stretch guest gets ejected. <laughs> You're out of here. <laughs> well, and the fans still loved him for that, I think. He felt like he had the right call. <laughs> right. He just didn't have the right media to, to <laughs> use that uh, influence at that time. Two strikes. That got a big piece of the catcher, Corporon. Now, he actually turned around and, and gave him the heave-ho from up here. He did. He? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Now you didn't think it was you, did you? No, we weren't here. This was before Bob and I oh, were okay. here. But I, I've heard all the stories. <laughs> well, I've got some. I got some other stories. I Steve will tell off the air. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Inning continuing with an infield hit and error, allowing Bird to get into scoring position. Is the 0-2 swing and he missed it to end the inning. Kevin Butler, always a pleasure. We will look forward to uh, watching your son, Drew. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you all for having me here. Welcome back. To Go, Cubs. Go Cubs. Go Cubs. Right.
Alfonso Soriano is out. Reed Johnson goes right to left. Koske comes into play right, and Sean Marshall will jump into that seventh spot in the order. He got the save yesterday's third of the year. Back now in the eighth inning, and this would indicate to us that Carlos Marmol would get the ninth. Very crucial inning here in the eighth today. The two, three, four, five hitters scheduled for the Houston Astros. We talked about this in the past about saving the game in the seventh or the eighth inning, and certainly this is the inning that Cubs are going to have to work their way through the best hitters in this Astros lineup. The 0 1 to Sanchez. Bunnett came back up and hit him. But he was still in the batter's box. If he had totally vacated it and been in fair territory, he would have been out. Rarely see that called, however. Well, just the physics of the play. It's pretty hard for a batter to bunt that ball and be completely out of the batter's box when it makes contact with him. Good call that time by C.B. Buckner. Way outside on a fastball, it's one and two. Left-hander Escalona, Sergio Escalona. Got a two-one game in New York. The visitors leading there, however, it's Oakland two, Yankees one. Josh Willingham with a two-run homer off AJ Burnett in the third. Pop up, flip downs working for Darwin Barney. The new Bud Light Bleachers series provides fans with exciting new opportunities in the Bud Light Bleachers this season, including free t shirt Mondays, $3 12 ounce draft Bud and Bud Light Tuesday nights, and Dollar Vienna Beef Hot Dog Wednesdays. Tuesday night special also available in select locations in the seating bowl. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. Hunter Pence bounces foul. As we like to say eerily quiet. 0 for 7 to start this series. We would be very fortunate to get through the weekend without Pence picking up a hit. One one pitch and a nice play by Castro. Well, Pence has given himself chances for hits. Several balls hard. That's very little consolation, but I'm sure as he gets back to the bench, his hitting coach Mike Barnett's going to tell him, "Hey, stay right there. That's all you can do is hit the ball hard somewhere." In the case of Hunter Pence, fortunately, he's been hitting it right at Cubs defenders in this series. Lead two for three with an RBI. Strike one. Fastball and missed it. Strike two. Base hit to right. Soto wanted that fastball up, but he wanted it up a little more than that. Chris. 
Now from our Galaxy pitch tracks, you see there's a very fine line between a hittable fastball and one that's just a little bit too high to get to. That pitch actually was uh, on the outside corner, but uh, height wise, just below the belt. That time Carlos Lee took him the opposite way for a base hit. Johnson bounces into center. And Lee will stop at second already in scoring position. Chris Johnson just glad to see Randy Wells out of the ball game. He was flailing at those sliders all day long. He didn't care who came in out of that Cubs bullpen as long as he didn't have to see another Randy Wells slider. Takes that one right back up the middle of the field for a base hit. Carlos Lee looked like he had thoughts about going for third, but as you mentioned, he's in scoring position with two outs. Just dropped anchor right there. Speedy Jason Bourgeois is going to take over at second and run for Lee. And Matt Downs will pinch hit for Brett Wallace. Now that introduces. Here comes Mark Riggins. As Mark Riggins makes his way to the mound, Carlos Marmol jumps up with a baseball and starts to crank it up in that Cubs bullpen, possibly for a longer than one inning save. Matt Downs was activated off the paternity leave list yesterday, missed three games for the birth of his first child, son Matthew. Was born on Monday. That's Matthew Jr. weighed in at seven pounds, five ounces. I wish they would have had that in 1982 when my daughter Lacey was born. We had just finished a night game at Shea Stadium, preparing to travel on to Montreal when I got the call that my wife Joan was going into labor. I asked my manager, hey, my wife's going into labor. Can I go home? He said, yeah, sure, as long as you're back by game time tomorrow. Well, that was a physical impossibility, but uh, this paternity leave, I think, is a real yep. good move on the part of Major League Baseball. Those are the moments you don't want to miss. Downs has been excellent in terms of just getting on base as a pinch hitter. 536 OBP in the pinch. Two home runs as a pinch hitter. And that's a, for Brad Mills, a very frustrating three out of 18 with runners in scoring position. And they have outchanced the Cubs throughout this weekend. Go back to that high fastball. This time, Sean Marshall was going to make sure he put it in a location where the hitter couldn't get a swing at it. Fastball ball outside two and two. Altuve is on deck. A former San Francisco Giant, born in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. As a pitcher and an infielder collegiately at Alabama. Fans getting into it. And as Marshall gets set for a 2 2. And he got him on the curveball to end the inning. They strand it here. Cubs will try to add on in the bottom of the eighth, leading 2 1.
Bourgeois stays in for the lead after pinch running. In the top of the inning, Downs pinch hitting for Wallace. He'll stay in and play first. Left-hander Sergio Escalona will do the pitching. So Escalona in the ball game yesterday came in to face Kosuke Fukudome and walked him and promptly was taken down uh, for Fernando Rodriguez. Downs, by the way, has only played three career games and just over 11 innings at first base. Mostly played second in his big league career, but he has played all four infield positions. 2 0 to Barney. We'd love to give Marmo a little cushion here, jumping back into a save situation in the ninth. Three and one on Darwin Barney. Trip foul. Berto Quintero was uh, playing catch out in the Astros bullpen. I think that's because Carlos Corporan may be removed for a pinch hitter in the ninth. And we've also got action on the bullpen mound. That's Fernando Rodriguez. Fly ball center field. Michael Bourne. To the out. Right. Time now for our Feldco upcoming schedule. A lot of NL Central coming up. Division leading Brewers, at least as of today, supply the Opposition to start the road trip. St. Louis and Pittsburgh are tied for second. Cincinnati off to a disappointing start this year, but still in it five games back. Koske with his first at bat. Ball one. There's a pretty good chance you'll see Jason Michaels and Clint Barmas. Used in pinch hitting rolls in the ninth. Strike. Missed low on a fastball. Matt Garza goes for the Cubs tomorrow. Jordan Lyles, a rookie right hander, still looking for his first major league win. Pitch for the Astros. Lyles, 20 years old, made his major league debut here at Wrigley back on. May 31st. There's Matt Garza. Pulled a deep right. Pence chasing after it. Won't get it. In and out of the vines. Koske hustling toward third. And he has a triple. So far, Escalona has uh, not proven to be a left handed specialist against Kosuke Fukudome. Faced him yesterday, walked him, faced him today, and gives up a triple to the right field corner. The ball was hit extremely hard. Pence took a little bit of a circuitous route to that ball. It got by him all the way to the vines, and Kosuke turns the corner at second and slides into third with a triple, his second of the year. Horizon call to the pen. Be Fernando Rodriguez when we return.
it's righty Fernando Rodriguez. Yeah, same pattern out of the bullpen as yesterday for Brad Mills. Escalona followed by Rodriguez yesterday. Rodriguez with an inning of two thirds did not allow a hit. Struck out one. He did hit Marlon Bird with a pitch. Otherwise, zeros across the board. And you know what Jeff Garland did during the commercial? He bought his parents a phone. <laughs> Infield in against Reed Johnson. What you're going to say about Pat another Prius? Curveball missed. And field in with Fukudome at third. Cubs leading 2 1 in the eighth. Fastball 2 0. Rodriguez, former Angel. Kale, their new pitching coach, plays Bat Brad Arnsberg in June. And ball four. Galaxy pitch tracks. You see where Corporan is set up out there off of the outside corner. It's right in the middle of his body, but way off the plate for ball four. A strategic pitch around right there, if you will. Although, usually, if you intentionally pitch around a hitter like the Astros just did to Reed Johnson, you play your middle infield back and go for the double play on the next hitter, but the Astros still have their infield drawn in. Yeah, they can't really turn two in the middle. Both middle infielders too far away from second base. But the only place you could is on a backhanded. Well, not even that. On ball to third, somebody's got to get to second base. And Altuve is playing pretty close to first, about halfway in between. Not only is it nearly impossible to turn a double play with this particular defensive alignment, it's very tough to get to the bag at second and cover on a stolen base attempt. Castro is a double play candidate. And he chased a bad one. 0 and 2. Now he's got a battle to make contact.
Fake toward third and a look at first. Back up and hit him. It's foul. Armel ready for the ninth. Don't mind getting a little extra support here. Cubs leading by just a run. Another 0 2 pitch in the dirt. One and two. It's not easy to waste a pitch on Starlin Castro. He can get a bat on just about anything you throw up there. Laid off that breaking ball in the dirt. They want to go in with a fastball here. Nearly clipped him. Rodriguez won an inning in two thirds yesterday. The hit a batter. It did not give up a hit or a run. A bit more of a pressure spot here. That's a pitch that's usually meant to set up the next pitch, which will probably be a breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. Weeks past the diving Johnson and Bucadome's in three to one. Castro on a two two pitch gets it through the drawn in infield. His 44th RBI. The ball nearly on the dirt. Astros catcher was down on his knees getting ready to block that pitch in the dirt. Castro gets enough of it to knock it off the glove of Chris Johnson at third base. A little extra insurance there for Carlos Marmel in the ninth. 125 hits on the year for Starlin Castro. Only Jose Reyes of the Mets has more among National League hitters. Ramirez will discard the shades. A run in, two on, still only one out. <laughs> Fastball strike. Bit of an adjustment for Ramirez, who was wearing those shades. Clearly, he felt he had a little better vision without him. Doesn't even have eye black on. Anario Dale Rosario. a catch. Neither guy gave any ground. An apparent lack of communication between the outfielders out there. Looked like Pence was calling for it. Bourne, the center fielder, as we mentioned many times, is considered the captain of the outfield. He's supposed to call off anybody if he can make a play. Unable to come away with it that time. Carlos Pena will bat 
for Baker. And stay in and play first in the ninth. Daniel one for two as a pinch hitter this year. An easy move to make, Len, as you mentioned, he'll stay in and play defense at first base. With a lead late, you try to get your best defensive team on the field. Also, give him an opportunity here for an at bat against a right handed pitcher with a couple of men on base. All one inside on Pena. I was looking for back to back wins for the first time in about three weeks. And their first series win for the first time in over a month. You can accomplish both by maintaining this lead. Nine winless series after taking three of four from the Brewers back June 13th through the 16th here at Wrigley. Very rough stretch. Missed again, three and oh. Late movement on that fastball, but it did catch the outside corner three and one. Boy, and judging from Carlos Pena's approach there, he had the green light on the 3 0 pitch. He looked like he was ready to swing if he got the pitch he was looking for. It wasn't that tailing fastball off the outside corner, so he took it, even though it's a called strike. From our galaxy pitch tracks, this may catch the bottom of the strike zone. And once again, anytime a catcher pushes that ball down in the dirt to catch it, it always makes it look a lot worse than it really is. Well, according to pitch tracks, it was. As we often say, it's where it crosses the plate, not yep. where it's caught. You rarely see that, as you say, called a strike. Three and two runners will go. Here's the pitch in the dirt. Base is loaded. Work around through to first just in case Pena swung at the pitch, which he did not. Opportunity of Soto. Yeah, an opportunity for Gio to get a little payback. Rodriguez struck him out looking in the ball game yesterday. Has a chance here with two outs and the bases loaded to repay the favor. Her ball strike one. TNT Uverse multi view Cubs with the sacks loaded. A run already in, adding some insurance here in the eighth. Oh and two.
two and two. Four straight curve balls this time from Rodriguez. First two in the zone, the next two wasted low and away. Like a straight change up that time from Rodriguez and Gio is all over it on that inside part of the plate. A smash down to Johnson who does a nice job of getting to that ball could not find the handle and then makes a poor throw across the diamond. It's a nice backhanded stab right there into foul territory but here's where he starts to have issues reaches into that glove doesn't come up with it cleanly on the first try by the time he gets it it's too late. That'll be it as an Ariel Del Rosario comes in the Verizon call to the pin five one Cubs. Anario Del Rosario is on. Trying to get the elusive third out for the Astros here in the eighth. Three runs in. That makes it a non save chance for Carlos Marmol, but that's all right. We will head out to get the final three outs today and treat it like a save opportunity. Bird is the eighth Cub to bat in this inning. At this point, uh, save opportunity, no save opportunity really is of no uh, regard to Carlos Marmol. He just wants to put one outing after another after another with consistent deliveries, especially with that slider. Foul tip strike three to end the inning, but the Cubs at three runs to their lead. It's 5 1 as we move to the night.
Kaplan and Todd Hollinsworth break down the game and preview the Cubs next matchup. Don't miss Coors Light. Cubs post game live immediately following the game right here on Comcast Sportsnet fans best friend. Pena stays in at first. Another Carlos in the game as well. That's Marmol. Familiar spot for him here in the night. Altuve leads it off. Fastball strike. You referred to a soft landing the other day. This would have to qualify as another one, a four run lead. Not nearly as much pressure as in a one run ball game, and he's facing the seven, eight, nine hitters in the Astros lineup. The win would go to Randy Wells, his first since April 4th. It's been a long time coming. Rodrigo Lopez available in the bullpen. He's getting some throwing in as Altuve starts the inning with a single. I do not think Lopez would be the guy if Marmol gets into some trouble here. Well, that's not a bad pitch. That slider down at the bottom of the kneecaps on the outside corner. Just a real good piece of hitting by a young. Jose Altuve to take it right back up the middle of the field. Corporan takes the at bat and is promptly hit by a pitch. Jason Michaels will come up. Boy, those extra runs now looming large. Another hard slider with good break. Unfortunately, nowhere near the strike zone. Pitches Corporan on the outside of that right ankle. That ball never in the strike zone. Brad Mills and one of the Astros athletic trainers going to check on Corporan. That's Rex Jones, one of the trainers for the Houston Astros. Uh, unmistakable, yeah. that big cookie duster. Going to take him out. Corporan limping off, and Humberto Quintero will pinch run for him. Not a real good spot. Mm, not at all. I don't know if they're adding a lot of speed at first, but a lot of options off the bench. That's where occasionally you'll see a manager use a starting pitcher. Uh, and that runs the base as well. We saw Lou Pinella do it with Jason Marquis. Other teams have their designated runner earlier this season. The Cubs used Casey Coleman as a runner on several instances. <laughs> one and one on veteran pinch hitter Jason Michaels. Lopez still the only guy up in the Cubs bullpen. Called strike two on a slider. Ramirez picks it up, little hesitation, and they only get one. That's Quintero at second.
Looked like that should have been an easy double play a hard hit ball right to Ramirez at third base. He had a lot of trouble getting the ball out of his glove to initiate that double play. Right there takes his time by the time he gets it on to Darwin Barney. Barney decides he's better off just hanging on to the ball rather than risking an errant throw at first. One and one to Bourne. Not really concerned about either of these guys on the basis with a four run lead in the ninth. What you can do with Michaels is turn that into a double play if you can get a hard hit ground ball, but can't bobble it with this guy at the plate. Nope. Three and one. Problem here is if you let Bourne get on, all of a sudden, tying run would come up. Sanchez not a big home run threat, but the guy after him is Hunter Pence. Swing, and miss, three and two. Actually, a little surprised Bourne didn't take that one all the way. Like Gio wants another slider here. And a swing and a miss, strike three. It's a strike slider that time from Carlos Marble, not trying to get tricky, just throws it down the middle of the plate, and Michael Bourne with a big long loopy swing swings right over the top of it. Pitch to Sanchez missed wide. Pitch with Michaels running his fouled back. Now one and two. Pop to right. Kosuke makes a grab. Cubs win. Cubs win. Five one the final. Marble recovers and does not give up a run in the ninth. And they have a shot tomorrow at their first three game winning streak of the season. First win since his first start of the year. Boy, and this is exactly how you like to see a player respond, possibly pitching for his very existence in that starting rotation and came out and picked up his first victory since his first go round this season was really good today. He and four relievers held the Astros to one for 11 with runners in scoring position, and we always give credit to the catcher on a day like this. Giovanni Soto standing by with our Luke Stuckmeyer. 
Thank you, Len Giovanni. Nice to lock up the series win, first of all. But tell me about Randy Wells and what he did so well today on the mound for you. Oh, I was doing uh, really good. He was mixing his pitches really well. His off speed was unbelievable today. And, uh, you know, he, he gave us a chance. He, he kept us in the ball game, and uh, he threw a pretty good game. I know you've been waiting for a home run. How good did that feel for you at the plate? So good. I mean, uh, you know, been scuffling on and off in the, in the home plate. But, uh, you know, the great thing about it, we got to win, you know, put a couple of bats uh, good together. So, you know, the, it's, a, it's a fun day today. Carlos Marmol's been trying to work his way back into a rhythm a little bit. Little trouble early on. What do you say to him to calm him down when you walk out there tonight? Um, you know, right there, just say be himself, you know. The, Pitch like it's a you know like it's a roll run game and never lose focus. I mean everybody's inside it's a little funk, but uh, you know Carlos Mom has been great for us for 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 a long time and he's going to be continuing doing that. Congratulations on the win. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you guys. You know what guys? Chance for three in a row and a sweep tomorrow, Len. Thanks, Luke. And you're right for Gio. It's his first homer in the month of July. See the W flag flying. A chance tomorrow also to finish this homestand at five and five. And that will do it for our game coverage, but more to come. Stay tuned. Coors Light Post Game Live coming up next. The final score today the Cubs five, the Astros one. Our next Cubs telecast on CSN Wednesday night at seven. The Cubs head north to face. The Milwaukee Brewers, 7 o'clock Central Time for Game 2 of that series. In-game scoring provided by ScorePad. And now for Bob and Luke and our entire crew, this is Len Casper sending it over to Cap and Holly in our downtown CSN studios.